Green Party shenanigans. Who's yeah. ready? <laughs> so this is the opening. I'm ready. Do you want me to just uh, start reading and then we can comment as we go? Yeah, because this one's only June 1st. So it's... This is the the prelude to the current. <laughs> so like in that way, it's kind of like helpful. Um, All right, fair. So we'll we'll just walk through it because this is this gets uh, chaotic uh, quite fast, and uh, where it goes was uh, leads to a lot of great memes, <laughs> but also uh, can get into interesting discussions about party politics in Canada. So what do we have here? Green Party rift over Israel. Palestinian conflict grows as MPs break from leader. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has exposed a fault line in the Green Party, threatening political unity as lawmakers break from their leader and rank-and-file members clash with a party spokesman. So this is Annemi Paul, for those who don't know. She is the leader of the Green Party. She was voted in recently, and she ran in a by-election because she's not an elected member of parliament yet. And she lost in that by-election. So she's the leader of one of our several Canadian political parties, but she doesn't actually hold a seat in Parliament. Oh, man, I can't wait to finally understand some of the memes I've seen. <laughs> yes. And uh, another important thing about Enemy Paul is that she was, like, directly held up as the, like, successor of, of Elizabeth May, the previous Green Party leader. Yeah, we had a we had a local running for the leadership, Dimitri Lascaris. Oh, I wish Dimitri had won. Yeah, <laughs> Dimitri is definitely I would put him in the left wing camp. the The one thing about Dimitri that I have issues with, of of everything, is he he tends to ascribe to a lot of the gray zone stuff. If those of you know know mm. gray zone, uh, and Aaron Mate and all that bullshit, can't stand that, but. <laughs> So, like, there's some things where I have some slight disagreements, but when it comes to, like, leftism generally, like, he, he tends to be out there fighting the good fight, I think, for the most part. And he seems pretty sincere. He came and gave a local talk about Venezuela back when uh, the news was pretty heightened about that conflict. Uh, or at least the conflict was between America and Venezuela and the whole Juan Guaido bullshit. And so Dimitri's uh, spent a lot of time in Venezuela, and so it was nice having him come locally, give a, a talk about that. Dimitri is weak on theory. He's got the spirit. I think his judgment is pretty good. Everyone is weak on theory, so it's not really... <laughs> yeah, like, my, my only issue is, like, when I said the gray zone stuff, so gray zone, for those of you who don't know, is, like, uh, they're basically anti-imperialist, which I agree with, but they take the stance of just, like, being anti-imperialist. This means that, like, Every single thing that, like, the Americas do is automatically bad, and everyone else, by extension, is automatically good. And that leads you into some weird conflicts, like, Grey Zone denies, for example, a lot of the things that Assad did to his own people. What's up, buddy? They yes. also think like, that, like, Rojava is bad because they had help from America. Right. It's just like a very weird contrarianism that isn't based on reality or like any actual political stance. It's just, it's I like, don't know, it's just very annoying bullshit. Um, and so Dimitri, like that's, that's my, like he, he tends to like uh, have a similar vibe to him in some cases. I wouldn't say he's necessarily gone as far out as Grey Zone, but he definitely has worked with people like Aaron Mate, who works for Grey Zone. And so there's uh, connections there that lead me like, eh. But like on the grand scheme of things, like his, uh, I've liked a bunch of shit that he said. So, and plus I know him, you know, that counts. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that he's grifting. I feel like some of the Grey Zone people, it's clearly a grift, but I, I don't think I, I get the same vibe from Dimitri. And, and, I mean, Paul, I don't know if it's going to come up in this art article. Does the uh, Bolivian stuff come up in the article? But uh, her, I don't think it does. Her husband was supportive of the right-wing coup in Bolivia, I think. I think that it was her husband. Or it was someone associated with her. So either way, her, yeah. her politics no, it was, was her the husband. exact opposite of Dimitri in being problematic, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, thank you, Famous Horse, for the subscription. It did not uh, do some sort of fanfare, but it is very lovely that you subscribe to me yet again. This is your four-month subscription, so thank you very much. They've become dogmatic is what I'm hearing. Her husband had a job in Coup, Bolivia. Okay, so he actually worked for it. Either way, City Connection. So I already did not like uh, anime, uh, anime Paul. But we'll get into the article here. The dust-up kicked off after Green MP Jenica Atwin directly challenged leader Anime Paul's position on the crisis, so the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, as framed in this article. In a Twitter post last month, she said a statement from Paul calling for de-escalation and a return to dialogue was totally inadequate. I stand with Palestine and condemn the unthinkable airstrikes in Gaza and apartheid, Atwin wrote on May 11th which is based hmm. and good. This is, this is based and good and should have just stayed right here. <laughs> yeah. The tweet followed one day earlier by Green MP Paul Manley. So, Gre so the Greens have three seats. Well, had three seats in Parliament. <laughs> uh, one yeah. of them was Jessica Atwin, the other was Paul Manley, and the other was Elizabeth May, who used to be the Green Party leader. And Jessica's seat was in New Brunswick. Did I get that right? Yeah, Frederick. Yeah, so her seat's in New Brunswick. Manly and Elizabeth Mays are all the way in British Columbia. The tweet followed one day earlier by Green MP Paul Manley, who said that the removal of Palestinian families from East Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah is ethnic cleansing. And so, yes, also correct. And we covered the fact that Ed the Sock was completely wrong about that. But... Now we get in. So Noah Zatzman. A senior advisor to Paul, uh, so enemy Paul, not Paul Manley, because that's a bit confusing. <laughs> Noah yeah. Zassman, a senior advisor to Paul, expressed solidarity with Israel in a May 14th social media post that accused many politicians, including unspecified Green MPs, of discrimination and anti-Semitism. So he's throwing shade at some of the other MPs. We will work to defeat you and bring in progressive climate champions who are Antifa and pro-LGBT and pro-Indigenous sovereignty and Zionists, he said in the post, yeah. which he told the Canadian press was meant as a response to the Green MPs as well as the broader issue. <laughs> you know, Antifa Zionists. That's exactly what we need. Can we time warp for one second? Paul has run the election in Toronto twice, lost twice. Oh yeah, I forgot that it was, was it twice? Emmy should have given up her seat when she quit as leader. That would have been cool. Yeah. I think it was just one. Oh, I guess she ran probably under the green banner before she was leader in Toronto. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. It's only been once as leader, though. Um, it was funny because Maxime Bernier also ran in that race and got less of the vote than he did in the <laughs> in the last election. Yeah. Were you going to say something else, or did you want me to continue? Oh, it's fine. The internal rift has only widened in the week and a half since a tenuous ceasefire was reached in the 11-day war that killed more than 250 people, uh, mo not just mostly Palestinian, pretty much all. The fallout includes online accusations from prominent Green Party members, such as 2020 leadership runner-up Dimitri Lascaris, who says Zatzman has defamed him, Atwin, and Manley by accusing them of anti-Semitism. So Dimitri definitely uh, pro-Palestinian in this case as well. Playing out in full public view rather than the party backrooms, the feud has highlighted a sinkhole in the green road to more socially progressive ground under Paul, who has sought to steer the party away from earlier efforts to highlight its fiscal conservatism. Which is, you know... Here's the thing is, I've always had a criticism of the Green Party of being fiscally conservative. All their p policies tend to be fiscally conservative, and that's always pissed me off. And everyone kept on telling me, no, the Greens, seriously, the Greens are left wing. You got to trust me. The Greens are left wing. They've never been left wing in terms of their economic policy. It's always been fiscally conservative. And it is annoying to me that more uh, of these people that tend to like, that somehow they're going to find a lefty camaraderie in the Green Party just blows my mind. Paul has attempted to remain above the fray, saying party debate is healthy, but that increasing reports of anti-Semitism in Canada must be confronted. 
There are differences of opinion that come up naturally within parties, and certainly Israel and Palestine is one that has demonstrated the differences of opinion, she told reporters Monday in response to questions about whether there is anti-Semitism in her party. As only the second Jewish person to lead a federal party with seats, I will say that anti-Semitism has no place in politics, Paul said, adding that she is very troubled by its resur recent resurgence. The first was David Lewis, who led the federal NDP in the 1970s. I think we can kind of scroll down a little bit, but Atwin declined requests for comment, but mainly rejected the notion that policy criticism announces, amounts to cultural hostility, and I think we can go down a bit more. Um, just because like, I don't feel like reading the whole thing. Um, so Zatzman is like, oh, we'll smooth things over, everything will be fine. He pointed out that Manley was one of multiple would-be nominees rejected by the NDP under former leader Thomas Montclair head of the 2015 election for previous comments on Israel. So that's the other I thing think... to note here is Paul Manley, who's one of the only Green MPs, tried to run for the NDP and was kicked to the side by Thomas Montclair, who was the leader before Jugmeet Singh and was not a great leader. And I'm glad he's left. And since he has left, has been uh, very yikesy on the political, like the political commenter uh, circuit. He has not been great and is showing his stripes. Uh, um, I think something to focus on is the paragraph above. The, these are long festering issues and enemy is attempting really to clean it up and smooth things over. Yeah, is a complete that, yeah. lie, yeah. as we will continue <laughs> to see if we. Oh, I don't know well, how much I, is more is in this article. I but... would say, yeah, I would just say, like, probably what Zatman is getting here is he wants anime to like, I don't know, get rid of the, uh, the anti-Zionists, right? Yeah, no, that's literally, yeah. literally it. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's interesting because I want to say to see what else is the only reason I wanted to stay on on that Paul Manley point for a second, though, and the fact that he didn't find space in the NDP. One thing that like really frustrated me back when there was so there was a point where a lot of people that I knew in the Palestinian activist sphere started like not jumping ship, but really like turning away from the NDP and kind of quasi supporting the Greens, at least a lot of Greens who were openly pro-Palestine. And I, like, I sympathized with a lot of that. But the thing that frustrated me as well, like on top of that, was like I knew like the base of the NDP predom like predominantly supports Palestine. And it's the leadership, just like the leadership here, right, enemy Paul, that often comes into conflict with these issues and doesn't want to like alienate a certain base or donor class, right? Yeah. So what happens out of this is you have this conflict. But like what annoys me is like, as I said with the fiscally conservative thing with the, the Greens, is like I like I don't think the Greens have ever been as left as everyone likes to say they are. And it's like, why would you jump to them when they're they're not offering you anything better than basically liberals but with a green policy and even then like elizabeth may like backtracked on a lot of like pipeline and tar sand stuff before like last election so it's like at what point are they like indistinguishable from like the libs anyways and it's like then like use your energies within the ndp to at least make them better or or create something else like i don't i don't, I don't know i don't know if the green party is worth saving in my opinion but i've i've never been a huge fan of the green party yeah, it's just kind of like it would be nice to capture that like seven, eight, ten percent of voters nationally for the NDP rather than let them go to the libs or the cons. Um, and I will say, like, because the thing is, like, we can be done with this article. Yeah, now. yeah, no, I was going to move off it uh, to the Taiyi one. Uh, it is worth saying, though, that like with the internal pressure that we put on the NDP, we at least got Jugmeet Singh to to utter the right things in the recent conflict, right? So not to say that it wasn't frustrating as hell, and at points I wanted to, to tear my beard out. We, we eventually made some progress. So I don't know. 
And and I'm sure if people and activists wanted to get involved with the Greens, they could do the same thing. But the Greens have this weird way of like uh, implying that they're they're like an open tent that is like so open that Elizabeth May has said several times she's never going to whip her caucus or whatever. But then it's like, okay, then you could have conservative Green members, really. You know, <laughs> she's just never going to whip. Yeah. Them. Like, I don't know. It just gets to a point where it's like, I, I can't imagine you building solidarity. So we get this one. Tears, anger, regret inside the green implosion. Remaining green MPs, Elizabeth May and Paul Manley entreat Jenica Atwin to return to the poll. So what happened after? So we got... I don't know how much of this article we need to read other than the fact of, like, what happened was so Jenica Atwin said uh, she's leaving and left over the shit that we just read before, which is that this person this close confidant within the top tier of the Green Party, was mad at the comments they made. So then she ended up joining the Liberal Party of Canada. <laughs> and I have to remind I think, you. Sorry, go on. I think there are parts of this article that are worth like actually reading because it talks about like how it relates to Enemy Paul. Um... Do you, you find that after this advertisement? Sorry, it's right there. Okay. Sources close to the yeah. situation told the Taiyi that rookie leader Paul has rejected any analysis that concludes that she was responsible for Atwin's decision to join the Liberals. Those sources say that Paul was convinced that Atwin was a threat to her leadership, and as the former parliamentary seatmate of former Liberal cabinet minister Jody Wilson Raybould uh, had been whispering to the Brits for a long time about joining them. Sources within the Green Party told the Taiyi that the grassroots of the party, especially younger voters, saw Atwin as the natural future leader of the party. As the sense grew that installing Paul as leader was a major mistake, Atwin was seen as the right choice as interim party leader. That, that to me, seems shocking. That anyone thought yeah. that Atwin was going to be good leader. Like, where is this information coming from? Sources. But then the next two paragraphs are where it gets wild. One of the key issues that Leader Paul has raised is that MP Atwin never gave her a chance to deal with the younger MP's issues before she decided to cross the floor. But the Taiyi has learned that in the meeting on May 26, attended by several witnesses, Atwin tried desperately to get Paul to listen to her. The New Brunswick MP asked for an active email that would work in her attempts to reach the leader. Multiple sources who were at that meeting have told the Taiyi that Paul told Atwin that her email accounts received Atwin's requests but the leader chose not to answer. <laughs> yeah. The same sources say that Atwin was in tears at the meeting. The Taiyi reached out to Atwin to confirm those facts, but she did not respond. That is like... She goes so... to one MP. Yeah, she goes to one of her only three MPs. Her only ones outside... Her only one outside of BC. And like, we're... Like... The thing that shocks... So... Crazy. Well, the like, thing that shocks me is like what she said was like not too different than what a Paul Manley would have said, and not too different than even like what Elizabeth May might say. So it's like to to purposefully like shun her. Like maybe maybe it was like a threat to leadership thing, but you already became leader. Like I don't. Yeah. It's just so weird. So weird. No, oh, it's yeah. so messed up. Um, and then it sent you to tweets. Yeah, we'll say, so the interesting one is, uh, do you want me to read uh, Jenica's thing first, or do you want to read this other one first? No, the Green Party of Green? Quebec. Okay. Yeah. Is, like, that's the statement that they posted calling for enemy's resignation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so this happens, Atwin decides to cross the floor, so she's now a liberal MP. And because of this and the whole thing, uh, chaos starts brewing, and now you have calls for enemies resignation. So this comes from the Quebec wing of the Green Party, which again has no elected representative. To whom it may concern, Jenica, Jenica Atwin left the Green Party caucus following attacks and accusations of anti-Semitism by Mr. Zatzman, special advisor to the leader Anime Paul. Through her silence and mass support for Mr. Zatzman, 
is considered directly responsible for Ms. Atwin's departure from the Green Caucus by members of the Quebec Wing of the Green Party. From now on, the Quebec Wing of the Green Party of Canada, representing all local associations in Quebec, calls for the immediate resignation of the leader of the Green Party of Canada, Anna May Paul. The AQPVC, along with thousands of members across the country, is calling on the Green Party of Canada to remove Ms. Paul if she refuses to leave the leadership in the next few hours. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the next thing about this is that with um, the Green Party of Quebec, the leader is a like open eco-socialist. Like he's really cool, has great politics. And uh, enemy Paul has refused to meet with him since she was elected leader of the party. So they again have had no contact and no support with a, again, the leader of the party. Um, another important thing that I can't remember what article I read it in is that Enemy Paul demanded the same pay as a elected member of parliament from the Green Party. Like, she is not a member of parliament. <laughs> she has failed to be elected, and she's being paid that much by the party. Um, which is just it's like... so weird. Everything about this Absolutely is so insane. Weird. And then... Immediately after, Jenica Atwin releases this statement after joining the Liberals, supposedly regarding... And this is what makes me think that it's about enemy Paul's leadership more than it is about the Palestinian issue, because Jenica Atwin is an opportunist and doesn't give a shit about Palestine. Um, and, you yeah. know, that's kind of the issue with having a non-ideological party beyond a v right? vague idea of environmentalism is that like you get these opportunists who then leave and continue to be opportunists in a different party. Um, so I'll just read her statement here. Yeah. My words regarding the conflict between Palestinians and Israel were intended to send strength and love to peoples, I believe, are in need of support. Palestinians are suffering. Israelis are also suffering as well as their loved ones in Canada and around the world. No one wins with war. I regret if my choice of words caused harm to those who are suffering. Anti-Semitism is wrong. Islamophobia and racism are wrong. We all have a responsibility to listen and learn as much as we can and try to help. I'm still learning the best ways to offer support for people on the ground. I'm thankful to have colleagues of all faiths and beliefs to do work, my work and to support peace. I'm looking forward to sitting down with my new colleagues and stakeholders to continue my learning on this matter and to continue to support a two-state solution. Just which, like instantly, nothing. Completely different than wanting to end apartheid that uh, she tweeted out before this. And yeah, and, which is like amazing. Like it really exposes herself. Like I am so surprised she put out this statement, other than to like appeal to liberal stakeholders because it really calls out the fucking hypocrisy here. Which is that like you clearly mere mere weeks ago. We're calling for the end of apartheid and then as soon as you cross the floor it's like now now i want a two-state solution and everyone on both sides is harmed uh everything about this it's like you you clearly have no principles at all yeah no like it's purely it's spike like the thing is i mean you know I mean, this tells I do you believe... you're a leader of a party. You need to read your MPs emails. <laughs> yeah, like that's it. That could have solved this whole issue. Is if Paul, if enemy Paul, responded to emails yeah. from her fucking <laughs> elected members of parliament, none of this would have happened. The Green Party of Quebec would probably be like annoyed with her because she's still like shitty and right wing but would still be you know affiliated with the federal greens like i don't even know what actions they're taking at this point but it's like what are they supposed to do and then also you wouldn't have learned you wouldn't have lost a third of your caucus like yeah no it's i so in ways like none of this makes any <sighs> sense. Like there's there's internal shit here that we not, we don't get. But yes, Tim was wondering about the memes. So here we have some fun memes here. This was uh, the first one. We got the 
the Green Party, also the Green Party, everyone else. <laughs> Which is what I feel like uh, I felt this, this whole uh, past few weeks of watching them just like tear each other apart. And uh, yeah, like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I will say too, uh, just on the topic of like, and like, it was weird because it like, anim, like she, anime like came to speak at the vigil on Tuesday. And I felt like it was the worst out of, out of all, even, even worse than some of the like conservative speeches. Cause like everyone else felt like was at least cognizant of some sort of like tragedy that had, had occurred. But the way that she was speaking was almost like she was doing a like out of all the people who spoke, hers was the most that felt like a campaign speech to me. Like she was trying to say, like, as a leader, I would do blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and it was not substantive. It was all like showboating. And it's someone who like has taken a stance against what a lot of the people who attended that uh, vigil on the Tuesday supported the Palestinians, right? Uh, so it was just very awkward having her there uh, in her capacity as a leader of the Green Party. But just, uh, I mean, out of everything being weird already, her hers was very cringy. I came away feeling cringe. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all of this happened, and then within the past couple of days as well, last night there was a... Um, the Federal Council of the Green Party had a like meeting to try to to decide if there was going to be like a recall vote on enemy Paul's leadership basically and right before that happened reports said that she threatened elizabeth may saying like you have to support me in this meeting or else there will be consequences which is just a wild thing to say to the person who got you the leadership position. Yeah, that's shady as fuck. And then also Elizabeth May didn't really speak in the federal council meeting and left early before the vote happened. And then also two other federal council members quit after the vote. Jesus Christ. Like... And she survived it, right? Like, she didn't... Uh, she's going to remain the leader. Based on the last reporting there was supposed out to be... before I came online to stream today. Yeah, I didn't read the report yet. Because there was something about like there being a condition to it. And I hadn't quite gotten around to like looking at what the condition was. There's another ultimate um, coming. It never ends. I just want to read uh T Time Training says there's speculation that critical detail here isn't that Zatzman went after Atwin. It's that Zatzman went after Atwin early. That Zatzman's plan is a Paul's plan. Yeah. Ooh, enemy Paul is trending on Twitter. <laughs> um, it keeps getting spicy. I got another meme here. We got a uh, Denica Atwin say, "I'm quitting the Green Party," and then you know you got your Natalie Portman here going to take a principled stand on Israel apartheid, right? Of uh, the Denica Atwin stone faced. Take a principled stand on Israel apartheid, right? <laughs> I, I love this yeah. meme format has been like making the rounds lately, and I fucking love it. Love it. I think we got a, another one of those. Yeah. Uh, this just proves we NDP are better than the Greens because NDP became anti apartheid, anti Zionist, and pro BDS since disciplining Nikki Ashton, right? Right? Yeah, this one is more anti uh, NDP, but similar vibes. Of the NDP trying to pretend it's better, and it's not perfect. It's definitely better, but not perfect. <laughs> I like <laughs> this one was my favorite. <laughs> it's Diglett. <laughs> it's a Green Party team stuff. Oh my god, <laughs> it's a good one. Strong Padme face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Green Party tombstone. I'm fucking <laughs> just her face. <laughs> oh. Pokemon. Okay. So yeah, it looks like the like federal or national council meeting or whatever. Um, 
instead of deciding to vote. So they said that um, enemy Paul and Paul Manley will have to arrange a joint statement where enemy Paul repudiates past remarks from a former advisor and reiterates her support for her fucking party caucus. And then um, her spokeswoman confirmed that otherwise a vote of no confidence in the leader will take place on July 20th. <laughs> I will say, um, uh, yeah, this this is uh, this is incredible. Yeah, it's just been so much and just like so fun to watch because like, I mean, I, yeah. I've never loved Elizabeth May, but there's like I have a tinge of like, she did she put Green Party on the map. You know what I mean? Only to like she pushed. I mean, it's so like the part of me doesn't feel sad for her because she pushed so hard for anime, only for her to ruin <laughs> anime, only for her to ruin <laughs> everything that Elizabeth May built. And <laughs> it's such a short time. Like it hasn't it has it hasn't even been a year yet, has it? I don't think she uh because it or maybe it was right before the pandemic? Or was it during? You know? Hmm? When was Anime Sorry. elected leader? I can't remember. It's been less than a year, right? It's here. Yeah. No, like, it's only been, like... God, when was the Green Party election? Any time do you know? Feels like a decade. Yeah, like, what August or something. What was, yeah. Wasn't there another candidate as well that the party tried to kick out for, like, Palestinian reasons? Hadad? He kicked out Dimitri Lascaris. Was it Dimitri? I um, it was, uh... can't remember her name. The other Mariam Haddad, was... yeah. they tried to kick out. I don't think it was for pro-Palestine stuff. It was for something else, though. Yeah. But they had, like, the party had previously kicked Dimitri Lascaris out of the party in, like, 2015 or 16, because Dimitri Lascaris, Dimitri led the, like, push to pass a BDS resolution in... Uh, yeah, the yeah. Green Party, like, AGM. And that was what I originally signed up for the Green Party to vote for. Um, and I forgot to cancel my membership um, <laughs> until Anime Paul got elected leader. And then I finally did. Yeah. But, um... So, you know, I Chatting stayed to vote for Dimitri. When, uh, when as, you canceled your membership, um, I remember that. Leader, yeah. But, um... Dimitri got kicked out, and then Elizabeth May hired that one dude who worked for the conservatives to and spent like oh yeah like hundreds Kinsella. of thousands of dollars. Yeah, he hired, she hired Kinsella and spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars of Green Party money to reverse the AGM decision democratically and against a Green Party charter or whatever. Like bylaws that they operate under, and what? eventually, I think they went to court over it, and it got reversed. I don't know. It was just like the Green Party always has so much fun drama that basically means nothing to federal politics, but is just so fun to like hear about. Warren Kinsella blocked the Imperial News account on Twitter. <laughs> nice. I can't even remember what it was over. It was something like I had tweeted something and he actually had like retweeted me. Oh, I, I remember what it was. Oh, fuck. Yeah, okay. So you remember like, so I yelled at uh, Maxime Bernier and somebody had put my photo online but had like a black bar like across my eyes and it, it like had some sort of thing saying like, uh, that I was secretly working with Warren Kinsella, and that's why, like, uh, I interrupted Maxime Bernier because there was evidence that somehow uh, Kinsella was like investigating the PPC. Like, I can't remember all the details. So I made some sort of joke about like, uh, "Yes, Kinsella, when are you going to pay me?" And then he ended up like retweeting my thing, and then I I said I made some other statement about like. 
criticizing his work for the liberal government, be like, oh, thanks for the retweet. Now could you change this about yourself? And then immediately block me. <laughs> he's a shitty person. That's uh, that's all you need to know. He he's pretty much a a political like a a paid political actor that works for any campaign that will hire him to basically uh, do do dirty political shit for. That's pretty much what he's known for. And so uh, good for him for blocking me. I guess I guess that like disputes what that conspiracy theorist thought that I was somehow a paid shill of his. <laughs> um. Jerry, Jeremy Appel, yes. Um, the Big Shiny Takes Pod apparently has a recording on SoundCloud that he got of ten minutes from a meeting with Anime Paul and her staffers the day after Jenica Atwin crossed the floor. If we want to listen to that, you yeah. can send it in Discord. Oh, I was just gonna that's what I was uh, distracted yeah, yeah. about because it's. Just like his description of it sounds wild. Uh, how long uh, do we have just the description? Okay, I've obtained a 10 minute. Uh, everyone should follow uh, Jeremy Uphel. I, I feel bad because right before, right before, or actually it was like a month into the pandemic, I did a recording with him for the podcast and it never came to air because like we went long and. Uh, I was I couldn't find the, like the the proper work life balance with my kids now in lockdown and all that fun stuff and so uh, it ended up on the cutting room floor but uh, his podcast is awesome and he's pretty awesome so you should follow him on Twitter. I've obtained a <laughs> excuse me I've obtained a ten minute recording from a meeting, uh, Anime Paul held with staffers the day after Jenica Atwin crossed the floor that I think may shed some light on the internal dynamics. Paul's bizarre press conference today. Uh, okay, an, identi an unidentified staffer confronts Paul over Noah Zatman's Facebook post accusing party MPs of anti-Semitism, calling it amateur and childish. I don't know if I want to like play the Paul unless they're like. Yeah, I think like, it might just be one that he's just linking to it every time, so um, that. So I'm gonna make. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't necessarily want to listen to the whole thing. He so I think you maybe cut clips then? In? The same one? Um, no, it just starts over. It says it's only a 10 minute recording. Yeah. Okay. No, I just want to read through it and then we'll, we'll probably find a way to wrap it up because it is just over the two hour mark. Okay. But up, up. An unidentified staffer confronts Paul over no one. Okay, yeah, we read that one. I feel like if I had put out, put that out, or anybody on this call had put this out, our heads would be gone. We would be done. If that was Elizabeth May's advisor, the same thing, the staffer tells Paul uh, of Zapman's Facebook tirade. Paul tells the staffer that there have been discussions with Zapman behind the scenes, but doesn't say what those entail. Being transparent is not always the way to go. Enemy Paul said. Yeah. Noah Zapman has worked extremely close with the party's MPs, Enemy Paul says. This is someone who you should all know if you're satisfied with what we have done in terms of our events, our media relations, our public profile, etc. It really links back to him. The staffer mentions... He's done a shit is... job then. Yeah. <laughs> the staffer mentions that EDAs are considering disaffiliating with the party and giving their money directly to Atwin and Manly. As for the EDAs and others that are asking to disaffiliate, I have said there will be somewhat, some people will be lost through this there will be some organizational capacity that will be lost but i think there will be some that are gained uh paul said well we'll see about that <laughs> hello my rebels hello my rebels i'm a good boy i'm a weirdo